season four, The Joan Quinn Profiles. As an editor for Andy Warhol's interview, the Los Angeles Herald Examiner, LA Style, and Detour Magazines, Joan covered the social set, the Hollywood hotshots, the international art scene, the mysteries of food, the excitement of travel, and the fabulous world of fashion. Joan continues to find creative people on the cutting edge who make things happen. Here's Joan Agajanian Quinn. Hi, I'm Joan Quinn and welcome to the Joan Quinn Profiles. Waiting to be profiled are actress Kieran Vandenblink and artist Ruben Amirian. Actress Kieran Vanderblink was born and raised on the East Coast. She went to Barnard College and by serendipity, she found herself on Broadway <laughs> as the understudy playing Margot in The Diary of Anne Frank. After she played the same role in Boston, it was back to New York City. And who were you on the stage with? You were with a lot of celebrities. I was. It was really amazing. I had been babysitting one night, and I saw something <laughs> in backstage, and I circled it. And I, I had, uh, had had a meeting with William Morris in New York, and I called the agent and said, I think I'm right for this. And I ended up, uh, it was my second audition, so it was very serendipitous. <coughs> and I, I didn't know who Natalie Portman was really that well, but she played Anne and we became very... When you, very went, when you went to audition the first time she was playing Anne? Well, you know, unbeknownst to me, I mean, she wasn't there, but I learned yeah. that I'd be playing her sister. <laughs> so it was a really extraordinary experience. So the, the role of Margot? Margot is Anne's big sister, so there's a two-year difference between them. And Anne is very vivacious, and so everyone with whom I was studying thought, oh, you're going to be Anne, and I said, no, no, I'm actually Margot. And, She's very sort of quiet and vulnerable. Oh, and she was. Yeah, she was. But the two of you looked alike. We did, and that worked, of course. Yeah. Um, but yeah, we did, and we ended up becoming very close friends. And it was a beautiful thing. Linda Lavin was in it as well. Yeah. He's wonderful. Austin Pendleton. Um, we had some really phenomenal actors. It was my first role as an actor. Uh, did you stay in that role, and then these people were rotating in and out? Were you there for a long time? I was there for eight and a half months. Oh, you were? <laughs> <laughs> I was there for a very long time. And actually, in Boston, I was an understudy, but you know they always say in theater, break a leg? Yeah. Well, the actress broke her leg. It was true? She, it was did true. Did you push her down the no, stairs? No, no, no. She was, you know, Boston is known for its bad drivers. So she was, draw she was walking across, and one car said, come here, and the other car went around and hit her. Oh my God. And I went to the theater. It was a rainy matinee in Boston. And I was thinking about Betsy Johnson pants because I had never made money in my life and I was just, I was so young. What am I going to do? Yeah. And so I get to the stage and the stage manager is like in this, you know, sweating and these red cheeks and he's like, if, if she's not here in 10 minutes. And I'm thinking, of course she's going to be here. And I'm not even thinking about going on. I'm you just signing even, in. Uh, I wasn't worried. And then I thought, oh my God, if she's not there. If she's not there, I had never been on the stage. I had never worn the clothes. Are you kidding? They don't actually put you on the stage until you open in Manhattan. We were previewing oh, in Boston. Oh, you were previewing in Boston. Yeah, they do a lot of previewing, don't they? They do. Boston? We're at the yeah, Colonial Theater, which is beautiful. I know. And I know all of a sudden, Natalie was like, like buzzing around me like a bee, saying, and then you go here, and then you go there, and then you go here. And I was going over lines with like an assistant to the director, and next thing I knew, I was on the stage. Wow. So with all that great stuff going on in New yeah. York, why'd you move to L.A.? <laughs> well, and it's funny, it's sort of connected to Natalie. She was doing a movie out here, um, and so her family said, do you want to come stay with us? And I said, sure. So I stayed at the Chateau Marmont, and I played ping pong, and drank milkshakes and wondered what traffic was all about you know you I, left your you left your role you were still well it was over we closed oh you closed yeah That's and so I, I could have stayed but it was very LA is seductive so when you came to LA did you start writing books is that when you started writing yeah books? I did I wrote a five book series of children's books based on the senses <laughs> on, on the senses yeah boom sniff ouch yum and wow and they didn't publish yeah. them. We've got to get a publisher. I know. Well, they did. And I, I sold them, but then they lost their money. So sometimes that happens. Oh, it's tough so out there. Oh. So I, ha I still have the contract, and it's a great source of pride. Oh. Now I just have to be very tenacious, which oh, I am. Oh, but that sounded so good for kids. Yeah, I think so. Well, my mom was a child development major, and oh. my mom was always like teaching Sunday school and reading to kids oh. and worked in Head Start. So, oh, so it, she, <laughs> it felt like homage, you know, to my parents right. to write the books. Sniff, sniff. Yeah. <laughs> Smell it. Yeah. Uh, after that or before that mm -hmm. or during your time out here, you went to Oxford to study? I did. I studied Shakespeare in How'd Oxford. How'd you do that? Why, how'd you get over there? Well, 
You know, I never studied abroad when I was at Columbia. I was so active. I established the Literary Society when I was there, so I was writing a lot oh, of poetry. When you were at Columbia? When I was at Columbia. It was the Barnard Literary Society, but we let in Columbia too, because it would be so hypocritical for a woman not to let in men after all these years. I thought it said Barnard <laughs> And it did, and it did, and we had one Columbia student. He kept coming, and I thought, bless his soul, he's in the Barnard Literary Society. So what did you do? Read? Oh, you were reading yeah. the, the, the... Well, we um, would write poems. I would uh, write a poem a day, and we had Seamus Haney came, and he oh, was a poet in residence, yeah. and so it was really extraordinary. It was very alive period of my life. Um, and then, uh, you know, when I came here, I, I thought I, I never went abroad and I thought this is an opportunity. Oh. So I went and I studied there and it was um, very exciting. Very and exciting. then you started producing. Yeah. And but, then but I, what happened here? Were you getting roles in theater? You know, Were you I in was, movies? Were you? I, I, you know, well, I took a break. I took a few years off. I wrote the kids' books. Uh -huh. I, um, my mom had passed away, so I helped to take care of a lady who was dying of cancer. Just felt like the right thing to the, do. Because of your mom. Because yeah. of my mom. Um, and I was, I had like a column in Los Angeles Times <laughs> magazine, so. So, so, so you were writing, yeah. but then you started producing. Then I did, because I started acting out here about four years ago, and I thought, you know, I, when I was at Barnard, what was really exciting was when I thought, there's this hole that I can fill. Barnard didn't have a literary society, and we have Amy Tan oh, right. and, and Mary oh. Gordon and these extraordinary, Natashki Shangi. They were all from there? They were all from Barnard, and we had no literary society. I oh, mean, talk wow. about a room of one's own. We right. had nothing. Right. So I figured in L.A., I thought there was a hole as well that I knew that I could fill, so I started to... Oh, that was great. Produce. And then, the, so you were producing, it's called The Little Beast Company? Yeah, first I was a little bird, and I did my first, <laughs> the bird became a beast. I got feistier as the years went by. Um, well, well, first we did these one-act festivals, but I had a producing partner. It was her idea, and I came on board. Oh, I see. And we did this one act, and Alec Baldwin came, and I ended up being flown out to New York to test for Saturday Night Live, so. And tell us the Alec Baldwin story, because it's kind of funny, <laughs> before we get to what yeah. you're doing now. Yeah. Um, so basically, we had this uh, we had this one act festival. It was just two weekends, very bare bones. We didn't have really sets or anything. I mean, it was me and an actor on a bench. Literally, we just sat on a bench for about 20 minutes, and it was this new playwright from Manhattan. This really exciting, very vibrant voice. The same voice that we'll we'll talk about, I'm sure. Um, oh, Becca, Becca very <laughs> Becca, exciting right. voice. Um, so anyway, so we did this uh, benefit show because we wanted to raise money for the company, and one of our playwrights had said, "I'm great friends with Alec Baldwin," and I said, "Oh God, you." You've got to get him. You've got to get him in to, to see us. To do, yeah. So he came, and it was just this magical night. I could just feel it in my blood. I just was so <laughs> excited. You know, I always feel it's like tennis. If you play with a great player, and if you know there's a great audience, you play up to it. Right. So I knew this was like the highest of stakes. So I was really excited. Anyway, so I was outside. Natalie was there as well. Um, <laughs> And so she and I were outside, and my best friend from childhood runs out and says to me, Alec Baldwin wants to talk to you. And she's like, she can't believe she's even saying it. <laughs> yeah, what was she doing there? Uh, she friend? was visiting. She flew out she flew to support to me. <laughs> yeah, you know, because this is exciting. So, so she flew out, and so um, she said he wants to talk to you. So I went back in, and he was looking very, like, professorial. He had, like, a satchel with him, and he was very kind in the face. And he said, um, I love your work. And he extended his hand, and I said, oh, my God, we are... So happy you're here. We're all like buzzing and thank you for coming. And he said, Would you ever do Saturday Night Live? And I said, God, I just want to work, you know? And he said, And I said, He said, I like that. And I said, Well, I'm a New Yorker. And he said, Me too. So we became friends. And I was flown out by NBC eight days later. And did you? And I tested. Did you? I did. And yeah. how did it go? It went amazingly. I got very, very close. In fact, the woman who got the part, I ended up in her apartment oh. from Craigslist looking for an apartment, and I, I couldn't believe I was looking at the woman who got the role instead of me, and it was a total fluke. Is that right? I was just looking for a place on Craigslist. I've never looked before. Did she look like you? No. She didn't, so it was totally different. Yeah, it was different, and she was lovely, and I didn't even recognize her, you know, and then, I, and then we started talking, and it turns out that she's the one. So. Were you upset? Um, no, I was really honored. You know, I, know. I felt I really too. honored. I had never even fathomed that I could be on Saturday Night Live. I always had ideas, like this would be a funny skit. But would you go now, do you think? Um, I think it'd be like fun for like a year or two. You know, I like to. <laughs> 
<laughs> well, I mean, if yeah. I had my druthers, as yeah. they say in the South, yeah. I, I would like to do some, yeah, I think it'd be really fun. You mentioned Becca because you were talking about one-act plays, and she's written a play called Mine, yeah. which is kind of a coming-of-age yeah. drama. It's a really special piece. Um, I have, this is my fourth play of Becca's. So oh, I've, it is. Yeah, I've directed one and starred in two of the one acts. But I thought I need a full length again because I hadn't done a full length since Broadway. Uh, and main, mine is at the Elephant Lab. It's at the so Elephant Lab. So you're developing Lab. it there? Yeah, and that's where I've done my other shows. So I have a really good relationship with them as well. In fact, my co-star Sam Daly in this show co-starred with me in the last Becca one act in which I starred, which was about a year and a half ago. And her name, Becca Brunstetter. Becca Brunstetter, yeah. yeah. let's make sure yeah. we say yeah. that so people <laughs> Becca can Becca Brunstetter <laughs> will sound our barbaric yops. <laughs> right. Um, she's really special. She's young. She's um, fresh. She really, I feel, has her fingers on the pulse of like how we speak. You know, we speak oh, sometimes. the lines are good? Yeah, well, and also I think that my generation, we speak in almost kind of a distracted way. Like, we're thinking of something, and then maybe we'll go really deep, and then maybe the next second we'll say, like, oh, I love that flower. But it's the truth. It, it, it doesn't feel theatrical. Uh -huh. It feels real. So that's how the... the uh, the play feels, is. yeah, and and I loved it as well because I think it's a dilemma that a lot of people think, which is like, whom do you love, and why do you make the choice that you make, and is it is it is safety and security a beautiful, wonderful thing, or maybe is that a trap, or you know, there's all and these questions. And what is your role? I play Annie. I'm a poet who doesn't write poetry, <laughs> which I can relate to. I too am a poet. I don't We've know what I've written. We've got so many poem. poets around here. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, I think uh, Annie is very. The description of Annie is that she's um, kind of adorable, like a rabbit, is how they describe her. Um, she's very sort of active and curious and wondering, and she wants her life to be different. And there are these two roads that diverge. There's her loving, wonderful boyfriend of two years, Doug, and then there's this like singer-songwriter, kind of sexy guy with whom she works as a barista, so she has to make these choices. And what do you look like on stage? Kind of like what you're seeing now. I don't really look that different. It's, yeah, it kind of just looks just like this. I mean, sometimes my hair is up and sometimes it's down, but yeah, it's kind of the face that you're seeing now. So. And, and, um, Becca really has worked with you a lot. Yeah. Does she have uh, connections to uh, the celebrity world? Um, not or that I most, know of. Mostly to the uh, writing world. Yeah, I mean, she's done work at Williamstown. I know she was working oh, on a play right. with Marissa Tomei, so I suppose that's a, that's a celebrity yeah. connection. Um, she's just a very exciting, fresh voice. Where does she know? live? In Brooklyn, of course. Oh, she lives back east. <laughs> but she's actually here writing for MTV right now. Oh, she is. But it's sort of, it's just kind of temporary. Oh, she, I see. She's a New Yorker through and through. We got we got all these New Yorker stories. Yeah. Baldwin, Natalie Portman, yeah. Becca. <laughs> you're right, you're Karen. right. <laughs> Karen. Karen. Um, yeah. Tell us a little bit about Ashton Kuster, too. Oh, well, Ashton, I've been studying with him for about five years in Kabbalah class. Oh, that's where it came yeah. from. Yeah. Uh, so at his house, and um, he, I didn't, when he came to the show, I'd only been studying for like a year, and I really didn't know him, I really knew Demi. Um, he was very shy, and uh, I but probably But did you look shy. like Demi? Oh, I don't know, I don't know, I don't know yes, who I look like. It's so hard to know what you look like when it's just you, but um, he, anyway, he, I was, I would ring on their doorbell for class, and, and I, he would say hello, and I would sometimes mm -hmm. think, oh my God, I don't know if he even knows who I am. <laughs> Ah, I hope so. He always did. Who anyway. was leading the classes? Um, I have a wonderful teacher named Shalom Sharabi, and he was leading the classes, yeah. And were there a lot of people in the class? Maybe like uh, 20 of us, oh, or maybe 10. Oh, that was a bit, yeah. Yeah, depending. It fluctuates, but we have like a core. And do you continue? I do. Yeah, we continue. So it's very exciting. That's really good. So Ashton came because Demi was excited, and then uh, he was also, the same night that Alec was there, it was a very like star-studded evening at the <laughs> Elephant Lab. <laughs> <laughs> it was exciting. I don't think the elephant had ever seen so much excitement. <laughs> We're going to the lab. Yeah. <laughs> we'll look for it. Thanks so much. Thank you. And lots of good luck. Thank you. Lovely meeting you. Don't go away. We'll be right back with artist Ruben Amirian. <laughs> Hi, I'm Joan Quinn, and welcome back to the Joan Quinn Profiles. I am here with artist Ruben Amirian, who was born and raised in Tehran, Iran, where he went to high school, and he uh, attended the Tehran University School of Fine Arts. 
1969, he earned a Bachelor of Architecture, in 1973, a Master of City Planning, and both of those were at Howard University in Washington, D.C. After he received his degrees, Rubin returned to Iran, where he practiced architecture. And first of all, what brought you to D.C. if you were going to go back to Iran? Was it planned that way? Well, I applied to a few universities. Uh, I got acceptance, uh, acceptance from Howard University, and that was just happened to be in D.C. Uh, and I always wanted to come uh, study and return and serve my country. Oh, and you that's did. That's what uh, happened. Yes. So that was the that was the main reason. And and how did you get along at Howard University? What had you ever been to the United States before? No, that was first time. <laughs> it was just fun. Uh, I loved every minute of it. You were yes. young. I mean, were you alone? Uh, I was alone at first. Then after uh, six months, my girlfriend came and joined me, and we got married. And, oh, uh, yes. really? Yes, yes. While you were still in D.C.? While I was in D.C., yes. Because yes. you were in school for quite a while then, weren't you? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> uh, well, uh, it was a five-year course. I finished it in six years. Uh-huh. Then I Were you speaking English when you came? Not a word. I wondered about that. How did, first of all, how did they accept you when you didn't speak English, or did they know? It was extremely difficult. It was very difficult. I remember uh, during the freshman orientation days, <laughs> uh, we would sit in this big hall, and someone up there would say, all foreign students come forward. <laughs> And I didn't know they were talking to me. And somebody would say, hey, they're talking to you. And You're a foreign uh, yeah. student. Yes, yes, <laughs> so yes. you had to learn when you were in college? I had to learn, yes. yes. That's amazing. Yes. Were you always interested in art? Is that why you went there? Or were you interested in architecture? Uh, well, art came from my mom. My, uh. mom, uh, my mother uh, had painted when she was young, before she got married. So our house was uh, full of her paintings. Is that uh, right? Yes, and uh, since I was a little boy, I would sketch and my mom would tell me how to do it. Oh. Uh, I wanted to become a singer and a painter. A singer? Yes, yes. Oh, so you're musical. Yeah. Uh, I, <laughs> Did you play an instrument? Uh, no, I sang. But you sang? Yes, I went to uh, Tehran Conservatory for a while. Oh, you did? And also painted. Uh, but, uh, you know, uh, with painting, uh, you, it was very hard to, to, to make a living, and my parents encouraged me to study architecture, and I, I, do, I, didn't, I don't regret it. You like architecture? Yes, I do. Yes, because I think you've served on the historical preservation in Glendale, and you, you also are on the design review. Yes. So yes. you've really given of your yes. expertise to, yeah. to Glendale, and yes. I'm sure Los Angeles has called you in on consulting and all yes. that as well. Yes. 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 So, so when you finished your architecture, uh, or when you were studying, did you have time to go to museums and? Oh, absolutely. I I always go to museums. I have a list of where I want to go, sitting on driver side or um, passenger side of my car, and when I go visit my projects and meet uh, clients, there is no doubt I have to stop a gallery or a museum. It's, you mean it's even a, today? Even from today, way yeah. back then. Yes, yeah, yes, yes. Um, so, were you painting all the time when you were in school, when you were in architecture school and design? Uh, uh, for a short time, when uh, I was new at school, uh, difficult, my English and, and everything else, I stopped. But one day, I had a drawing on my board, and one of my professors, Professor Fry, looked at it and he says, Ruben, you are an artist, you never give this up. Oh. And that, was reignited. That was the encouragement. Yes. That was the turning point. Yeah. When you were in, in um, Tehran, what kind of architecture projects did you do? In Tehran... Because you were pretty young. I mean, you were just starting out. Yeah, yeah. Were you with a big firm? I was with the firm. Uh, uh, the owner of the firm was Kamran Diba, uh, Queen's cousin. Oh. And I got to know him at Howard University. When I returned, I enjoyed his firm. Oh, Cameron uh, Diba. Cameron Diba, yes, yes. I see. Yeah. Um, we did very large projects. Uh, I did um, a housing project in Shushtar. Then I did a big hotel in Namakabrud. 
and uh, we were planning some joint venture with Harvard University. It didn't work out. Uh, I was involved with big projects. Were those pro are those projects still there now? Yes. Have you yes. been back at all? Uh, no. 1980, when I left after the revolution, I have never gone back. So many people left during that time, didn't yeah. they? Yes. And yes. I know, um, and, and some of them are living in England, and some of them are living mm -hmm. here. Yeah. Do you have those relationships? Have you kept up any of those relationships? Uh, most of them I have. Artistic I, relationships, uh, yes. right? Yes, 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 most of them. I still am in touch with Kamran uh, via email. I just saw his cousin in London. How oh, nice, yes, yes. So He's a brilliant architect. He did a museum in Tehran, Museum of Contemporary Art. Beautiful, exceptionally beautiful. And we don't see any of those images. We'll have to look for those things to see what style he worked in and... and uh... Well, you know, it's... Right now, the communication with Iran is difficult, and uh, not too many journalists go and search for these things. I know. We, uh, the museum has... Um, I read in Newsweek uh, some times ago about uh, five billion dollars of contemporary artwork. Is that right? Picasso, you just name it. Matisse, Rem you just name it. And it's It is there? in the storage of Museum of Contemporary Art. And it's yes. protected? Yes, it's, it's protected. Perfect. Yes, yes. When you were painting in, in um, um, Iran, did you ever get a show, when you were actually being an architect, you were still painting, did you have shows, I art had, shows? Yes, I had only one show in Iran when I had returned. Uh, that was in um, Iran American Society. Ah, uh, I see. It, it is. Um, what materials did you like to use? Do you like to use in your I work? I used to paint with oil. I really like the fluidity of oil, the, the, the feeling of oil. I even like the smell, but I have <laughs> developed Allergy. Did you? <laughs> yeah, but now I'm working with the acrylics. I'm going to show some of uh, these. I, uh, I'm going to show these, but when I'm holding this up, I just wanted to ask, um, as a practicing architect, and you've been in L.A. for 30 years, and you were on the historical preservation and the design review, what did you bring to those two commissions? from yourself, your background? I think it was my artistic temperament. Ah. I, 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 I look at everything through an artist's eye rather than a technical architect's eye. So when I design a house, for example, the first thing I think about is, OK, how are the artwork going to be Oh, you displayed? do? <laughs> yes. How, how, how can you look from one room to the other? and see further and further the space and so these are things that I consider. Space and then I think in the work which is a good lead into this work mm -hmm. you really talk about space or you paint about space. Tell us about this. Mm -hmm. Well this is a series that I'm working right now. Uh, in reality this is architecture. Uh, this, uh, this series that I'm working is really called Watts series. Uh, this is the area in Los Angeles where um, Simon Rodia's uh, oh, yes, towers are. Oh, yes, in Watts, yes. Yeah, so I, I, and I have you been there? Have you been to the towers? Every maybe month and a half I go. Oh, <laughs> because it's I so just, interesting, isn't yes, it? Yes, yes, yes. And that's a true architectural it's, phenomenon. It's, it's a phenomenon. Yes, it is. Yeah. Okay, this one? This is again the same from uh, the same series. All those round bottom of the... Uh, the, oh, the, yeah. the uh, Ceramics. Yes. And the uh, bottles, yes, right? Yes, 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 yes. Of course, these are all abstract of, of those forms. When, when you go there, do you draw? No, I don't. What do I, you do? I you photograph. Just, oh, you do? I photograph, yeah. And these, all the materials on these? They are all acrylics on canvas. Oh, they are on yeah. canvas. Yeah. Uh -huh. well, let's talk about this one. This is, again, from the same series. So you can see how you've approached it in different ways. You've just taken portions of the tower, right? Portions and uh, deformed them. I have not taken a portion and painted. Uh, it just, they're all uh, really just abstract forms 
kind of uh, informed. Which come out of yes. what you've seen. Yeah. And this one, which I think is really beautiful. I love this. Yeah. This is, a, this is a canvas this big, about 36 inches by 36 inches a square. It's, again, uh, acrylic on canvas. Uh, I like it, too. <laughs> is this inspired from there, too? Yes. yes it is. Yes, it yes, looks yes. fantastic. Yes, thank you. It's it's totally different than the other ones. It's yeah. more block yes, squarish. Yes, yes. What, uh, where else do you go um, to get inspiration? I, I don't go particularly somewhere. It, these things just happen. Yeah. Uh, for example, before this, I was doing another series uh, uh, which were uh, kind of influenced by the spaces that I was doing architecture, not the architecture uh -huh. of the space. But for example, there was a uh, four trunk tree in yeah. one of my projects. And I drew that many, many, many times. Oh, I see, I see. Uh, they became very abstract forms and it was a serious. And so w I noticed, because you did a, a beautiful portrait of me, which no one really understood that it was a portrait except it had my initials yeah, on it, yeah, which was yeah. great. And, and you said you had the jewels coming down, but you didn't really paint me. It was the feelings the that feelings, you got. Yes, yes. And the drawings leading up to it, that's what I was going to get to. You did so many studies before yes, you yes. got to that final piece. Yes, that's right, that's right. And how do you decide? Well, uh, I started with copying uh, Bacardi's uh, face that he, he had drawn of you. Uh -huh. That was the first sketch. Then I realized that Drawing a, a good face was not my, my thing. I, I see. I just was not prepared for that. Then I started sketching the name, and I started using the Armenian T, which means Taguhi, oh, which means it, princess. And that's my Armenian name, Takui. Did Takui. you know that? Uh, yes, I knew that. <laughs> that's that. Why. <laughs> oh, that's what it was. So I, I worked on that, and little by little it de developed to become a J and Q with the jewelry and yeah. Well, I thank you for being with us today. My pleasure, And for thank explaining you. your work because a lot of times people see abstract things and they don't know that it really comes from something <laughs> really strong. Yeah. <laughs> thank you very much for having thank me. Thank you. So don't go away. We will um, see you next time. J-A-Q-U-I-N-N-1 -N at AOL.com. Write to our email and 777 South Figueroa. 90017. Bye.